that will better protect children. We're hoping that he will take concrete action. And what's happened to you? Well, I was a, a young child and I was um, groomed by the priest and he started to sexually abuse me in the summer between 7th and 8th grade and I didn't tell anyone and thought it was my fault and I felt dirty and guilty and ashamed and it took me many years to well into my adulthood before I could face this. Then I went to the church officials and they, they misled me. They claimed that I was the only victim when in fact they knew of many other victims of the same perpetrator. They, they promised to keep my perpetrator away from others. They didn't do that. And he did, was permitted and did continue in ministry and he did abuse more children. What happened to him in the end? Well, eventually I got, um, um, I was invited to be on the Oprah show and then they removed him from ministry. And now he's, he's been removed from ministry, but that's all. So, um, for English viewers, what age were you between 7th and 8th grade? That was, um, I turned, it was 12 and 13 that summer. I turned 13 in the middle of the summer. Why have you started a group up here in England? Well, we, um, actually we're from different groups, but we believe that we share a common bond. All of us were abused by church officials, and for the most part, had the church officials done the right thing, we probably would never have been abused. If the church officials had immediately removed the predators upon the first allegations, I wouldn't have been abused. Pete wouldn't have been abused. My sister. And, and Margaret's sister. sister wouldn't and have one been of abused. The, the painful thing is to know that they even put priests in with disabled children. You weren't here at the beginning, but when Father Galano was posted to the St. John's Boston Spa, in uh, north of England, he was already a convicted sex offender, and the church felt put them in with the deaf crowd. The deaf children couldn't speak; they used they weren't allowed to use sign language in that school. They had very poor communication schools. It's an ideal place to put a sex offender, and the church did it. They and that's a sex why offender in a deaf school. And 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 that's why, if there were a, a, a database um, on the internet that had these names then the parents of the deaf children would have seen this priest's name and they could have kept their children safe. What were the consequences for you in, into adulthood of what oh, happened? Well, um, it had a, a major impact on my personal life. It affected my um, sense of self-esteem and how I developed. Um, I didn't pursue um, advanced education because of it. I was horrible in, in, in relationships. Um, so. I wasn't able to hold down decent jobs and it wasn't until I got some therapy and treatment that I began to understand the impact. Yesterday the Pope said that the way to ecclesial reform, to ecclesial change, was not through structural change but through penance. What do you think of that? <laughs> wow. Are we allowed to I say what we think of that? But, I mean, the bottom what? line is that um, penance will not protect children. What will protect children is concrete steps like yeah. exposing the names of the perpetrators, immediately removing all perpetrators from the priesthood, and saying that they can't work here anymore. Pete, what's happened to you and what do you think of what the Pope said yesterday? Well, I, I, as I said before, I was abused by Catholic priests as a child as, as well as, as others. But in, in terms of this, this idea that penance is the punishment, I mean, as my understanding is that the, the harshest punishment that the Catholic Church can dish out is the laization, or similar words, defrocking the priest. The result of defrocking the priest is the priest is then free to go into anywhere he wants and carry on abusing as a layperson. So, What were the consequences of what's happened to you on your adult life? The consequences for me have been very similar to the consequences for most survivors, and Barbara just, just enunciated that quite well, which you feel shame, you feel dirty, you feel guilty, you can't hold down relationships. Trust is something we have difficulty with big time. Um, you name it, feelings of depression, feelings of just 
feeling worthless and feeling like it was your fault are just I, such I common traits survi among survivors. I had a survivor of abuse who said she couldn't buy sweets in the sweet shop because every time she bought a packet of sweets, it reminded her of her abuser who used to buy her a packet of sweets. So a simple, everyday gesture of going into a shop and buying sweets became for her a memory too difficult to do. Dr. Martin Kennedy, I'm founder of Maxis. We have decided to have a conference on Saturday the 11th before the Pope came to give everybody an opportunity of what exactly survivors might be angry about or might be hurt about. We're going to have a series of speakers in the morning and then in the afternoon we're going to do a, a book, we're going to have an activity where the survivors themselves would draw, paint uh, and produce this book for the Pope. Unfortunately we've been told we cannot give the book to the Pope because the Vatican has already arranged the program. It's just by the we asked a month ago to do this and we told no we can't. Do it through the proper channel, through the nuncio, but we can't give it to the public.